Okay, so first things first, uh, I'm going to show you something because uh, I was getting questions actually from Matthew O'Halloran, Matt O, if you know him. He makes badass vehicles. Uh, he was asking about glass in uh, Unity using uh, Amplify shaders. So I'm just going to go down here and we'll just dig through these really quickly. So also I'm working on the foliage still as you can see. It's got motion in it now. It's got nice, uh, was it subsurface? See that? Nom 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 nom. Um, and I'm animating those using uh, vertex color. I'm just using the red channel. So I think the shader's almost done. I need to get the motion down a little bit better, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, so let's look at some glass shaders really quickly that are just pre-built. We'll just drag them onto some assets. So examples, there's community examples and then there's uh, official examples. I think in the official ones, you can get some pretty cool things in here. Like uh, translucency or transmission. Transmission, let's see what that does. I'm not seeing anything. I see no transmission. Presence to see. I think this is the one. I'm going to hide this selection too. So this one looks like it's following. I probably need to give it a better normal. Depth? Oh, so it's giving a depth mask. That's why we're seeing some weirdness. Uh, maybe we'll just open the scenes up then. Let me undo this. There we go. All right, so. So we've got the tessellation demo. We've got translucency, transmission, transparency. Let's do transparency. We'll just open the scene up. So here's uh, just their basic transparency material they've got going. Go to opacity control. This is like looks like a really basic one. You've got your smoothness control. Drunk Jesus. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for the follow. Um, let's see what else we got here. Smoothness. Yeah, it looks like it's just smoothness and opacity. Um, we've got a normal, which it does not look like you can control the strength of. Uh, let's look at the transmission. Oops. The nice thing about these little scenes is you can see them as well. Why have you switched for your project from Unreal to Unity? I have not switched yet, but I'm really tempted to. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, if I end up doing it, I'll let you know. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Um, oh, that's interesting. There's a like color control for the transmission. I think we looked at this one, right? No. Oh, yeah. So this one. That's cool. Where's the one I wanted to show? There's like one in here that's really, this one's crazy. Okay, refracted shadows. So look at this material. Look what it's doing to the shadow that's being casted. And you can control the strength of that. Like that's, that's insane to me. Hey, what's up advisable? How you doing? So if I turn that strength up, you can really see it in the shadow. Um, reflect, refract, soap bubble. Whoops, let's look at that one.
Yeah, so look what that's doing to the, uh, that's trippy. It looks like it's getting slight calculation issues around the border, but in general, it's just doing that to a sphere. It looks like, I wonder what we have opacity wise. Oh man, it even controls the opacity of the shadow. Soapy amount. <laughs> Index of refraction. Oh man, let's uh, let's lower that opacity so we can see what's going on in the soapy amount. Specular index of refraction. Where are these located? Uh, these come with the amplify shader editor, so it's like a. It's a node-based shader uh, editing tool. Corey, dude, thanks for the follow, man. How you doing? But uh, to get the editor, I think it's 60 euros. Position offset. We've got parallax occlusion mapping with... Uh, this one's really nice. I'm going to be using this a lot on the ground in our scene. So this is just... It's just a plane, of course, right? It's, it's got nice palm going on. Extrusion, double layer shader. Oh man, where's the one? Not water, two side of face, triplanar, transparency. Uh, oh, thanks, Devin. This is taking longer than I wanted it to, but I want you guys to see this stuff. Yeah, this is the one we were looking at earlier. I mean, if I go into my scene, and then we put some of the, uh, the transparency one. Yeah, so this one actually with the right normal on it starts to look a lot like what I'm expecting uh, when I'm playing with glass, glass shaders. So you control opacity, we'll do the smoothness. I got some nice bloom going on there. So this looks pretty cool. Um, the other one I wanted to see was the, uh, light screen. Is it this one? No, this is the soap bubble one. But look what it's doing to the image inside. Kanal was uh, actually messing around with this. What's up, Quilly Willy? How you doing, man? Hey, Axel. But yeah, that's basically chromatic aberration happening. I said aberration. Chromatic. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to stop there. It looks like it's being sourced to this texture. It's pretty sick though. Oh dude, what's up man? How you doing? So I did not Axel, I did not critique last critique, so go ahead and drop it in the stream critiques if you need a critique. Anywho, we're gonna move on. So I can get to, uh, we have two portfolios to review. The, uh, the bloom that you're seeing is just added to a, uh, what do you call it? I added it to the scene and it is attached to the environment. And then I'm using uh, Quilly Willy, dude, you'd be interested in this. Um, where are we at here? Check this out. 
That's some uh, indirect uh, GI. I've even got probes placed in here. See that? And you can just, uh, if I select this, oh, where are we at here? I can go into edit and I can add probes and place these where I need them in static meshes. Uh, Non-static or dynamic meshes can pull information from these probes that are grabbing information from the indirect lights. I've been doing a lot of learning off stream. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's uh, let's switch switcheroo. 